What's going on guys, it's your boy Siobhan here back with another video. So this is my long term review of the BenQ EW. 32 a now i've been using this 4k hdr monitor for well over five months now i'm sorry venq but i could tell you that this is the best monitor i've ever used for creating content media consumption now before we dive into the review and my experience of this monitor let me just get some basic specs out the way all the boring stuff so this monitor comes in at 32 inches 4k ips display it has a 60 hertz refresh rate i know I know you guys are mad, but they also offer a 144 hertz model, which is 27 inches and also at a 2K resolution. And I actually made a dedicated review on that monitor. If you'd like to check it out, I'll try to leave the links to that video down below in the description. So you guys might be wondering, why is this monitor not running at 144 hertz or more? And that's because as I said before, this monitor is primarily a media slash entertainment monitor, which is perfect for me because that's the thing I do. I added tons of 4K videos every day I edit photos in high resolution so having that nice IPS display sharp quality good color reproduction and that's where the 86% Adobe RGB comes in and also the 96% DCI P3 coverage is kicking in now basically with all those numbers it just means that it's quality it looks sharp the colors are vibrant it's punchy and it's good that's all i could say now i can't forget streaming netflix on this thing in 4k watching mkbhd all that stuff so all of this good quality comes just under 800 us dollars which is kind of expensive to me Thankfully, BenQ also offers more like other EW monitors that are smaller, more affordable, and have different resolutions that you guys could go ahead and check out, which will be down below in the description. Now, when I got this monitor for the first time, it was really easy to set up. The install was fairly easy. It came with all the necessary pieces, like a HDMI cable, no display port cable though. Came with a power cable, of course, and also a remote, which is actually really useful. So yes, this thing actually came with a remote right here. And this remote is handy, it treats it like a TV. So if you're ever in the bed, you could turn up and down the volume. And yes, I said volume because this thing also has a, some surprisingly good sounding speakers packed inside here, which I'll touch on later. So if you rather navigate the on-screen display with the monitor controls, there's also a joystick at the back, around the back right hand side that you could use along with three buttons. They're also well designed, so either way you'll be able to figure out the menus easily and quickly. Now on the bottom left, we also have a volume dial that you could use to to adjust the volume which is you know manual it's pretty cool but at the end of the day I always just use the remote or I just set the volume and then control it on the computer itself now so far I've been praising the monitor over and over again but one thing I don't really like about this is the including stands that it comes with now I don't really like these stands it isn't the best because it doesn't offer any or e like yeah it doesn't offer any flexibility so if you have a monitor arm or a monitor mount i'll definitely recommend you guys to use that vase mount adapter at the back so you could connect your monitor arm and actually adjust the monitor to eye level so what i've been doing previously was i'd get like books or anything i could find around the house to place under the base so yeah to stop you guys from doing that i definitely recommend you get some monitor arms so yeah the stand is pretty basic its only movements is 15 degrees back tilt with a 5 degrees forward tilt. There's no provision for height, you can't swivel it or turn it into portrait mode or anything like that. But at least we get some good nice like um, cable management at the back. So at the back of the monitor it has this nice cable management part and integrated into the stand which is kind of cool. It helps organize the cables for a cleaner workspace. Now in terms of connections and ports and all of that stuff, underneath the back we have a display port, display port 1.2. 
We have two HDMI 2.0 ports. We also have a USB-C port, which comes in clutch due to the fact that it accepts video signals. And you could also use it to charge your laptop and it outputs 60 watts, which isn't a lot, but it gets the job done. If you have a MacBook, you could connect that or any USB-C device of your choice. We also have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is nice to see. What I really love about the EW32ATU bars <laughs> is that it has this huge canvas. 32 inches of beautiful IPS display those 2.1 channel speakers since I have this monitor I haven't like switched it out since I've using it I've never switched it out because it's just so good so I have so much space while editing videos on this monitor it overall increases my productivity a lot allowing me to see more in the timeline and also being able to open multiple windows at once while scripting I don't feel crammed you know it's just another bonus so after five months until now I haven't seen the need to change any color settings so this month has tons of different color settings but I just leave it at is but you could go into the settings and configure tons of options so Ben Q has their HDRI and brightness intelligent plus technology which works well now the HDRI optimizes the HDR effect based on lighting conditions in your workspace if it's darker it would adjust if it's brighter it adjust so yeah that's really cool so that now brings to me a better viewing experience helped by the dedicated HDRI modes for gaming and cinematic content. There's also a neutral HDRI mode which basically turns HDRI off. Now importantly HDRI is smart enough to add a high dynamic range to non-HDR content without exaggerating the brightness or dark areas. Now, viewing angles on this thing is also impressive. Anywhere you tilt it from, anywhere you look at it from, it will still give you that punchy color, which I can't stress enough. The colors on this thing is sharp. It looks good. It's vibrant. Now, gaming. Gaming isn't an, like a good reason to buy this monitor, but you could game on it. You know, the IPS display would give you good, very, very good colors. Games like Fall Guys looks very nice on this thing. 4K playing fault. Now I know why people want to play certain games at 4K. It just looks good. Minecraft, all that stuff. It looks good. 60 FPS games, it looks amazing on this thing. Now, if you're a competitive, you want to play FPS games, Call of Duty, Fortnite, Valorant, don't limit yourself to 60 FPS. I mean, it looks good. 4K looks good, but you're just limited to 60 FPS. So if your PC is put is a beast like this, it's pushing over 300 FPS. You want to get like a 240 FPS monitor to play games. But in terms of watching content, chill games, you know, editing your videos, your 4K videos, editing your pictures, all that stuff, creating art, this it's hard to beat this thing from BenQ. Don't forget the speakers that are built into this thing as well. It's like an all-in-one beauty. If it could run 144 hertz, this would be a killer. But not a lot of people like to play games on a big monitor like this of 32 inches. People like to go down to 27 or 24 inches. Now it also has free sync inside and AMD. So if you have an AMD GPU, you could use free sync with this thing. If you have an Nvidia graphics card, you also use the NVIDIA G-Sync. I'm not sure if it's native G-Sync, but it works. You just go into the NVIDIA control panel, you'll see right there, and you're all set and good to go. Now, gaming in HDR is also available on this monitor. I'm not sure if I touched on that. So, what this monitor does better than any other monitor I've owned is utilize the HDR very well. The colors really pop here. Your games will look good. You will get three modes. You get the cinema, the game, and also the display HDR mode. Now all give you like different variations of color palettes, color temperature, and I'll show you guys live what it looks like. Now me personally, I prefer the display HDR mode, which keeps the grayscale and the luminance curve to the proper spec in my opinion, and it works best for HDR content. All right guys, so let me just show you quickly how you use the different features we have here. So let's go into the settings. These are the settings we have, we have the input, the picture where you could change the brightness and contrast as I mentioned, the color, this is where you'll find the low blue light, the different color modes you could use, the user option is your standard setting. Alright now let's look at the HDR mode guys, this is what I was talking about. So if we're going to color, going to HDR, the cinema HDRI, 
gives it such a vibrant look. I'm not sure if you guys could see it from this camera right now. Let me try to turn it down a little bit. But just look how those greens get vibrant. This is the game HDRI. Display HDR. But look at Cinema HDRI. Just look how vibrant that gets. It looks sharper. Everything looks richer. So yeah, that's pretty cool that it could do that from in within there. We have the audio, which I'll touch on later. The eye care technology, which uses brightness intelligent plus, which I talked about earlier on. And some more settings you could play around with. We also have custom keys, which you could make your custom profiles, then use them easily. The OSD settings, you could change that. Input auto switch, auto power off if you want to. The LED indicator. I kind of hate when that's on, but I'm going to leave it. Resolution notice, and you could just reset all your settings from within here. As I mentioned before, you could also use the joystick at the back to control it if you don't want to use the remote. But to me, the remote is just so much more convenient. Alright guys, so now I'm going to go through the different audio presets that they have. So if you go down to audio right here, you'll see that we have a different scenarios. We have the live pop. Cinema dialogue and vocal game. My favorite is rock on party because that has the most bass But let's just go ahead and listen and you guys could try and tell if you hear any difference I know the speakers and the microphone I'm using can't replicate the sound as well, but know that if it's maxed out, it will start to rattle. But if you have the volume at 90%, below 85%, you'll hear rich quality. Its speakers are from Trevolo, so it sounds good and it does a pretty good job. Alright guys, now to wrap this video up, the BenQ EW32 ATU is an excellent monitor for both content consumption and creation with great HDR capabilities and four ports for connecting multiple sources at once. The remote, you could use that like a makeshift TV in my opinion, which is kind of funny, but it gets the job done. Now, the only issue I have with this monitor, to me, is kind of the price. You know, it starts at $800. It's not something that everyone could have could attain you know it's pretty expensive for the average consumer now it isn't hard to find other 4k monitors out there but remember it's from BenQ you know BenQ have probably the best color in the business it supports free sync and g-sync it also comes with a Trivolo 2.1 channel speaker which sounds good so if you want a monitor that can do a bit of everything in glorious 4k then this fine monitor is one to consider from BenQ. It very much own like holds its own in gaming as well. It's still one of the best 4K monitors I've ever used, and I think it's actually the first 4K monitor, like real native 4K, and that's what I've been using to create all these YouTube videos you've seen since this year started. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Let me know if I missed anything on this monitor, anything you want to see. I could answer down below in the comments. Links to this monitor will be in the description as well, guys. As always, love, peace, and tweaks. Signing out.